With Grand Cross approaching three years recently, I wanted to compile here uh, 10 of the best aged characters in the game and uh, draw a comparison to them. What are, what are things that make characters age well in this game? Uh, and as I put down the list, um, I saw a big similarity between all of them. Now I put here uh, on my list only characters that released before the global launch actually only put characters before 2020. Uh, so these are characters that are all released in 2019 and are still good in the game. There's only one character that is, that's in the list that's from 2020, but uh, it's because I, I just shoot him in. I, I just I just felt like putting him in for uh, because he just felt like it. But uh, first off, before I actually get into the list, I will mention the slime characters. They shouldn't be on the list because they were buffed so technically their original release and how they were when they came out is not how they are now so it wouldn't make sense to you know consider them that but obviously right they are very good milam is to me the best blue character for deer still uh, you know uh so but it's not, it's not because you know milam was really good when she came out and now she's still really good she com was completely changed afterwards but if i should mention them because they did come out like in this like it, basically when the game came out it was super super early into the life in the game uh but yeah they were buffed so they don't count but i thought i should mention them my number one on my list is sr red liz sr red liz was in the first ever banner in the game her and green liz came out as the first banner in the game got top grossing actually um, and then we only got top girls and get an anniversary of the third anniversary. It's crazy. But yeah, she is still so powerful. Her, her role, Holy Relic is also very good. I will keep uh, Holy Relics in mind because I think they... Uh, buffs are different. But I think Holy Relics, you know, I think are worth talking about. Uh, her Holy Relic is really good. But it's more about her passive. Her passive doesn't exist anywhere else in the game the only character with a similar passive to her is sr slime rimuru and it's worse like they have not dropped a singular character in the game with a healing passive like a, a passively healing passive for your whole team that works as a fourth it's been three years and we haven't had a single character that can replace this character as that function. Now, you're not really rocking her that much anymore. Because with the game's meta, a lot of teams don't really... You're not going to really use her. But for a player that doesn't have the best of the best characters, this is a cheat code. Having that heal is super good for tower. Still, you know, I need to mention, like, th there was a, a big whale tournament, official tournament put up by the Marble, that the guy who won was using SR Liz. <laughs> so I need to mention that, right? Because the heal passive and also the relic. But the heal passive is crazy. The fact that he's not been, you know, uh, copied into another character, still with better CC, is wild to me. But in that same vein, as number two, I will have to mention, obviously, as well, the counterpart to her that came out on the same banner, Green Liz. And one thing I loved about that banner uh, was the fact that they released a premium character, the Green Liz, and a character that anyone can have, really, like the SR Red Liz. I really wish they would release banners like that again. Although, obviously, at the time, I would say even at the time, Red SR Liz was... A com competitive option with Green Liz being like, oh, which one's actually better? Because Red SR Liz, her passive was that good, right? Uh, Green Liz served different functions and so did SR Red Liz. If they could drop characters like that, like, you know, next time they release a new Meliodas, they release another SR Meliodas that, you know, is usable. That'd be so good, but, you know, thing of the past, I suppose. Um, Green Liz. She is on the optimal team for the hardest activity in the game. The dogs. Can you believe that? First banner in the game. And she's used on the optimal team. The best team for dogs. Which is, of course, for the Mali Freyer, her, and Fast and Mugafer. It's mostly because 
there's not that many characters. They don't really see healer characters that much in this game. You, 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 if you go in the catalog of characters, there really aren't that many healer characters. And so a character that has cleanse on the card has that um, buff removal as well. And an ultimate that heals, it also gives ultimate gauge. It was super, it's super helpful for uh, an activity like dogs, where you're constantly cycling for ultimates as well. It's crazy. They, they don't make as many... Really, like, go on the list of characters. There aren't nearly as many healers as maybe you'd think. They just don't drop healers because... I don't know why, actually. I was gonna, I was gonna say a reason, but I don't know why. Healers clearly sold well. She got top grossing, so... It's probably not a money thing. They probably just... I don't know. If they would release healers as side characters on festival banners, I think it would work tremendously well. Just stupid on their part not to do, to be honest. While it isn't accurate to the uh, release dates, I wanted to actually make it like more accurate to the release dates, uh, but I followed slide in because we're talking about all these Liz's. Uh, the blue Liz, still usable. It was a meta in the 4v4 team. And still a character you see around every once in a while, they're like, oh my god, I can't believe this guy's using, <laughs> he's using blue Liz. God damn it. A character that dies to proc their passive will forever be good. Because no matter how high the power scaling goes up to, it does not matter to them. Their role is to die. Meaning the worse they get, the better they get, technically, right? So that, this is why I said that there is a 2020 character in this list, which is Fraudrin. Technically, they are the same character, sort of. Um, if they die, they give the, the allies ultimate gauge. I do like Blue Liz more in general for specific activities. Like I prefer her for PvP, but Fraudrin is better if, you don't, if you're not willing to use like old food. And like in like Great Merlin. Uh, so they do the same thing, but they're used differently, which I like. Uh, but yeah, he's the only character in this list that actually released in 2020. He released in the, like, sorry, in the beginning of 2020. Every single other character is from 2019. And uh, they are the same character, kind of, but they function differently. That's why I actually added him, like, added them like, together, because they are the same. And um, interesting that we have not seen any other character that works the same ever since. Fraudrin. Really strange, because I think if they released a character like this for every element, it would be really good. I mean, it would be annoying, but it would be really good because then you, depending on what is the best DPS of the current meta, you could use the, the, the typing that's opposed to it. Like, let's say the best DPS of this current meta, let's say, was red. It's not, but let's say it was red. Uh, then I would be more inclined to use a green suicide character more often, but because, you know, there's only two blue characters do that, it's kind of strange. And just like we just uh, mentioned the Green Merlin, of course I have to mention her. And again, another character, just like every single entry on this list, that the reason why they are still good is because no one else is fulfilling their role. Green Merlin gives allies ultimate gauge. That one ultimate gauge is guaranteed for her to give, is enough that she's a character that's never going to die. Un unless another character comes out that also gives one or maybe two ultimate gauge. Until then, uh, it's, it's just, again, so long as the character has no one that they can be replaced with, they're always going to be a permanent thing in the game. Very strange that, again, some of the, so many characters are like this. Every single character on my list, again, came out from, uh, in 2019, except for Ajin. Um And there's no replacement for them. Be no, no replacement. None of these characters of characters that have come out that do what they do. Very weird, but kind of good in a way. It's nice to know that there are characters that release that you know if they function for something, very unlikely there's going to be a better version of that. P PvP characters that are like damage based, you can be damn sure a better damage based character is gonna come out. You can be sure. The one aged, obviously, because he was a DPS only character, and better DPS characters have come out since. But support characters struggle to age because usually they release a support character that does something and don't release someone like them 
for a long time. And it's the case with this Merlin, obviously. She, um, I think she came out after the Liz's. That's why I ranked her here. It wasn't um, on the uh, Grand Cross base uh, list of uh, releases. Because the coin shop characters were releasing one by one uh, on the coin shop. I think she released after. That's why I put her here. But yeah, um, Green Merlin still used in the PvP meta. Crazy. Next up, Red Arthur. I was actually not going to include him. Uh, but then remember, oh yeah, OGD. <laughs> Obviously for PvP. He aged tremendously. He was super good for PvP during the mono red, red Galfer, red Askenor, red Arthur meta. Obviously, he was key for that team because of the immunity. But flashback, uh, flash, you know, years later, and now he is a must, you know, work on for OG Demon. The end has come out, yes, and she is the optimal team now. But for majority of people that aren't going to pull in a terrible banner like that. Having Arthur is your, like, the only thing you need, and he's free. The only thing you need should be the current, uh, you know, uh, raid with ease. The raid is very easy as long as you have a coordinated teammate, and you have Arthur, and you have the end, right? So, the, the festival, the end. So, um, yeah, crazy to think about. This character that used to be a mostly PvP character that dabbled in PvE as well, because of his immunity, is right now a, a character... I run every day on my free to play account because you know I don't have Festival D on my free to play account, but I have Red Arthur and he carries me on OG Demon and that's his role. Next up is obviously Red Galfer. Uh, I should have actually put Red Galfer like before I think Green Merlin because I'm pretty sure he came out before them. Uh, but doesn't matter. Red Galfer obviously, you know, difficult to replace him because there's only another character that has rank up. And right now in the PvP meta, you don't see Red Galfer as much as did like a few weeks ago. Red Galfer was very be like Red Galfer was becoming a problem again in PvP because all the attack seals. Not as big of a problem right now, but still a very, very, you know, viable character for PvP. And obviously, you know, you're using him for the OG demon all the time. Both team not both teams. Honestly, you if you're using Summer at the end, then one person is not using Galfer, but it doesn't matter. Um, having a rank up is the thing that's keeping him alive, obviously. Uh, they are very stingy with giving more rank ups because they know it would completely unbalance the game if uh, a non Galfer character had rank up. That's exactly why. There's no other character in the game that has a card rank up. Um, obviously, you know, Shin has a passive rank up, but card rank up wise, I highly doubt there will ever be another character with this. Maybe if they release Festival Galfer. Uh, there will be a rank up for him, but again, it's because he'll be named Galfer, so you can't use two Galfers in one team. It would, because if you played when you could use three characters of the same name, the triple Galfer team was completely unbalanced and just awful to play against. Completely, completely unbalanced. Uh, so yeah, that's exactly why there's no character uh, in the game released to replace him. Obviously, fast, uh, not fast, I'm sorry, uh, the other green Galfer. Um, came out, and he was better than this Gaffer, but as time has progressed, I would say that this Gaffer right here is overall better, except for maybe like Guild Boss, uh, for specific Guild Boss teams that want to do like super high damage, and even still, like this Gaffer for specific Guild Boss teams is better than the other Gaffer, so it's like, you know, it's a give and take as well, crazy, I mean, this Gaffer is a uh, timeless character, just completely timeless. Next, we have Valenti, although Valenti isn't the most used PvP character right now. I find it very impressive that this character has survived for this long in the game. She right now is mostly delegated to cheesing <laughs> using her in Festival King, but the fact that she has survived as long is very impressive to me because she was clearly made to be a meta counter to Blue Demon Mally, and that's it. That was her whole function in the game. And the fact that she broke out of that and basically has transcended um, Blue Demon Mally, Blue, uh, Blue Lilia, which were the characters she was meant to go up against, and now is a character that you can use for much more than that, it's crazy to me. Because that, that was her intention. It was clearly her intention. That was the only thing she was made to do. And she was clearly designed that whenever that meta would go away, Valencia was meant to go with it, you know? 
but she just persisted and now she's still a usable character i wouldn't say she's the best or anything like that for pvp but she's still usable and that's more than you can say for most 2019 characters that's for sure my list is about to be done so i think i can be a little biased still released in 2019 shin is still on the best farming team in the game if there is um anything that you want to do fast and has aoe enemies you can count on green shin his relic really helps him as well but he was just designed in a way with the two aoe's not many characters have two aoe's and that's one of the things that you know really helps him the only character that has come out ever since shin's release that is actually better at what Shin does is Festival King because he also has two AoE attacks. Festival King is the best farmer in the game, right? But Shin is on that farming team still. And again, maybe I'm a little biased because I really like him. But he's still, like, if you use him in PvP, you know, I'll use him in PvP today, j just to prove my point. He's, he farms PvP. He uses him with, <laughs> with Lilia still. Uh, maybe Nock is a Tarmiel link. Mm, I haven't really used him since Tarmiel link. I, I really haven't, because Tarmiel link scares me. <laughs> Double AoE characters have been uh, extremely cocked by Tarmiel link. It is what it is. Uh, but he released so long ago, and I still use him to this day for farming. Crazy to me still. And that's my 10th character. I felt like ending with Death Pierce. He has served me so much, and I really hope that when he gets his Holy Relic, it's something that will help him even further. If it's something that can actually improve on his passive, I would go back to using him in PvP again, right? He's still used for um, Grey Demon as a fourth, and uh, you know, you can use him for much more for farming as well as a fourth because of his passive. I think that as a character that released in 2019, that wasn't very good at launch, um, you know, when he came out, crit was not meta. And then eventually, he became meta, or, you know, at least very well used, because crit became meta. And uh, now he's starting to fade away, but I think when he gets a Holy Relic, he could, you know, make a, a big comeback. And so I thought it was worth mentioning him. I didn't mention... So two characters I wanted to add to the list, I'll, I'll say them right now. I, I will not add them to the list uh, afterwards, but I'll say them right now. Um, green Gilfunder and Blue Gilfunder. Where's Green Gilfunder? I feel like are on the same boat. Although Green Gilfunder and Blue Gilfunder, especially Green, uh, were much better at launch than uh, Death Pierce was. Did I have them 100? Uh, I think that they are in the same boat, where right now in PvP, uh, you don't really see people running Green Gale Thunder anymore. God damn it, where is he? I really wish you could type someone's name on JP. Just Gale Thunder like you can do on Global. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> you don't see him on PvP anymore for multiple reasons. I mean, the extra, you know, defense related stats is really nice. But the fact that he's an SR really works against him. Because his stats are so low. His CC is horrible. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. But same thing where, you know, he... Um, he had a pretty big high, so many people using him at one point, and there, he's still being used, it's just not as much, um, but for an SR that came out day one, I think, I think he's a day one SR, very impressive, right? Uh, he doesn't have a saving grace because he already got his relic and it sucks, um, but Death Pierce kind of does, he still hasn't got his relic and I think there is a chance, do I think he's gonna make a comeback? Uh, yeah, maybe. But there's a chance. Well, let me know what you think. Are there, is there any character you'd like to add? You can add characters from 2020 as well if you want. I didn't add them because I wanted to keep more of a 2019 focused list. Um, I, you know, 2019 obviously is only JP. So these characters from before the global launch. But if you want to add characters, you know, maybe you, you, you pulled on their initial banner and you still use them. Sure, go ahead. I think I think uh, characters released in 2020 are still are still starting to be considered old now, right? It's been a long time.